Now then, vaccinating children is routine and has been widely accepted for many years. Measles, mumps, polio, the list goes on. But what about the COVID vaccination? Well, with news that the UK medicines regulator has approved the use of the Pfizer vaccine in children aged 12 to 15, ministers are now waiting on the green light from the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation on whether it can be rolled out. But what are the facts when it comes to vaccinating our children against COVID? Well, we're joined by Professor Beate Campman from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine to discuss this. Good morning to you and thank you, as always, for joining us to shed a bit of clarity on all of this. So we know that the Pfizer vaccine has been approved for use in children by the medicines regulator. When are we expecting this to happen? Because at the moment they're saying over 25s, but as the children, we don't know an exact date. Yeah, that's right, because we don't know an exact date because we would have to have a recommendation from the Joint Committee uh, for Vaccines to recommend to the government to actually go ahead with this. And this hasn't yet happened because the uh, authorization for the vaccine was only given very, very recently. And also we need to ask ourselves whether we are better off you know, making sure everybody has had their second dose before we go into a different age group, because obviously there are some logistics involved and we have to think about it very carefully. Why vaccinate our children? Very good question, because I think you're asking that question because we know that the COVID disease itself hasn't affected children uh, as badly as it has affected adults and especially adults with risk factors and the elderly. So if I just might recap, we vaccinate people for two reasons. One is to protect them against the disease that could cause them serious harm, which isn't really the case with COVID, not neglating the fact at all that some children have also gotten very ill and they could have longer term effects with it. But the reason to vaccinate children against COVID would really be to um, protect them against transmitting the virus to other people. So it's more for the benefit of the overall, you know, herd protection, if you want. And children are part of the transmission chain, although they don't play a, a more important role than any of us do. I guess for me as a parent, I'd be wanting to know what clinical trials have taken place, how many children the clinical trial had um, been tested on. I think that I was reading this morning, it's about 2,000. That doesn't sound very many. I mean, you tell me, is that normal? Sure. I mean, this is a very important question. And, you know, as always, we don't want, whether it's children or adults, safety is the absolute, uh, you know, priority. And we need to make sure that the vaccines can be expected to work equally well in kids as well, because otherwise there wouldn't be kind of no point in doing it. So from the safety point of view, we have data from a clinical trial that involved the Pfizer vaccine, which enrolled about uh, to just under three, 2,300 adolescents. So when we talk about children, also, you know, you might be thinking about very small children. We're actually talking about teenagers here because as part of the transmission chain, we have seen that the teenagers play a different role from the small children who are primarily sitting around with parents as their peer groups rather than being, you know, out and about with friends. So the idea is that, uh, you know, we know that the vaccines in the teenagers who are 12 to 15 work equally well when we look at the antibodies that the teenagers would have produced. And there, the number of 2000 uh, adolescents is quite, is a really good number. When it comes to efficacy, the data showed that none of the young people who'd gotten the vaccine actually got COVID, whilst there were 18 or 19 in that trial of, uh, you know, over 2,000 uh, young people uh, got uh, COVID. So there's clearly demonstrated efficacy. Um, when it comes to safety, the safety database is not enormous, but, uh, you know, the immune system or the body of 12 to 19 year olds is pretty similar to the yours and mine and everybody who's had the vaccine tested, of which we've got millions and millions of safety data now. And I think there's good trust to think that, uh, you know, we wouldn't expect any other responses in terms of safety in older uh, uh, people than we expect in the children. And that's why people feel fairly confident. But the good thing is also we wouldn't be the only country doing this. And the rollout to the vaccines for teenagers is happening widely across the world now. And pretty much like we saw with the pregnant women, where also we didn't have a lot of trial data, in fact, none, the safety data have all come through very, very convincingly. And there isn't really a good biological reason why the children should be behaving in any way differently. So I think there's confidence, but there will also be more and more data as we might go ahead and as other countries are going ahead. And the safety surveillance needs to be just the same as we have in place for the adults. 
Um, as far as the efficacy of the vaccines concerned, I mean, looking at yesterday's figures, and we've seen some media outlets, um, we've uh, we've seen some people who were very, you know, running scared, uh, headless chickens. Uh, oh, the Delta variant, um, uh, the, it's going it's to cause us problems. This could this could put, set us back. And the numbers actually um, uh, look look pretty good here. 126 people with the Delta variant were admitted to hospital. Of those, 83 were unvaccinated. Um, mm -hmm. Just three had had both doses. So that shows how important vaccination is. Um, yes, there. Uh, uh, there were higher uh, positive tests, um, but uh, uh, very sadly, but only one death yesterday um, and hospital admissions are flat. Um, so we are looking pretty good here. You're absolutely right. But it's also important to see that the people who didn't get admitted or sadly, you know, some people died, had two doses of the vaccine. So I think the absolute priority at the moment must be to get the two doses to people who have already had their first dose, because it's only then that we'll reap the maximum benefit of these vaccines. Because we've seen that uh, against the Delta variants, the efficacy of one dose isn't brilliant. And we can only really optimize that by giving the second dose and have people what we call fully immunized. And that should really be a priority now. And it's great, you're right, we're seeing the divergence of the numbers of cases versus the hospital admissions and serious illness. And that is exactly down to the vaccine programme. And that is really good news. Beata, you're the expert. Obviously, we've got lots of people that want to ask you questions. We've got Rebecca on the line now. Good morning, Rebecca. Hello, hi. Hello, good to talk to you. So what's your question? Um, so I got my first COVID vaccine when I was 15 weeks pregnant. Um, and I got the AstraZeneca. I'm due my second one in two weeks' time, and I just wondered, because the guidance has now changed with AstraZeneca, should I be getting the Pfizer one instead? Or OK, yeah, I understand your question. Um, and first of all, it's good you got vaccinated in pregnancy. The vaccines are now recommended also for pregnant women, although I have to stress that the majority of women, and that's really a reassuring message, do absolutely fine in their pregnancy. But there are risk groups who might have uh, more complications, which is why pregnant women are now included in the vaccination program, and that's good. So the second thing is the AstraZeneca vaccine is associated with these blood clots, which again, are incredibly rare. And at the moment, the governmental recommendation is that people should complete their vaccination series with the vaccine that they first had when they had their first dose. So because it's really exceedingly rare, and I hope you had a good experience with your vaccination and there wouldn't be any contraindications uh, to give you the same again. But uh, also you should discuss with your midwifery team. And the current recommendation is that the vaccine you had before is the vaccine you should get again because we haven't got a lot of data of the mix and match yet. OK, Rebecca, good luck and good luck with the baby. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank Bye. you. Uh, Simon said, I just had my first vaccine and passed out and had a seizure. I've never had a seizure before. Do you know why this might have happened? Uh, how can I avoid it for the second dose? But of course, this may, may have been coincidental. It may be something else. So this is quite a tricky one, Simon, because I have no clue about your medical history and I wouldn't really want to give lots of advice over television when I, I don't know your story. But um, it is all a question. This is a serious side effect if it really is associated with the vaccination. I don't know the time frame. You could have had a high temperature that could have led to a fever, uh, to uh, a fit. And I think you need to ask your GP and the people who look after you what can be done to um, make sure that this wasn't, you know, uh, caused by the vaccine, etc. And, and it needs to be reported as an adverse event following immunization. And for sure, if you go ahead with your second dose, you should be observed uh, for a little longer. And it really depends when that seizure occurred in conjunction. And anyone who has a seizure, it's a serious thing, they should be investigated thoroughly. OK, thank you. Sham says, my sons are in their early 20s and they were given the AstraZeneca two days before we were told they shouldn't be given to under 30s. The second jab is due next week. Are they OK to have it or is there a risk of these blood clots? Yeah, so again, I must stress that the blood clots are really extremely rare. So they're less than one in 70,000. Uh, and, uh, you know, the reason why the recommendation was changed is because the risk of severe COVID 
uh, goes up with increasing age. And there is a sort of risk benefit ratio that was calculated that actually got us to recommend that the younger people should not have the AstraZeneca vaccine. But if they've had their first dose, again, pretty much like Rebecca's question, they should proceed with their second dose and uh, they'll be very, very fine. All right. Um, Mary says, I'm currently 32 weeks pregnant and my age group has been called up for the vaccine. Now, there's no clear information anywhere about if it's a good idea. It just says it's my choice. I know pregnant women weren't included in the trial. So can you give me any facts? For example, what are the effects on the unborn baby? Yeah, very important questions. And we now have a lot more data on vaccinating pregnant women. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccine have been given to thousands of women, including pregnant women in the US now. So, And you're quite right, pregnant women were not included in the initial trials, although there are some trials going on uh, at the moment. And all the safety information we have for the woman herself shows that there's actually no difference to the general population. And for the unborn baby, if anything, it will be of benefit because the antibody that you make against the COVID uh, will travel to the baby, not the vaccine, not any viruses, nothing like that, but just the good protective antibody will travel to the baby and also can protect the baby a little bit for a few months against COVID. And if you want to find out more about that, we've actually put some videos onto our website, which is called Imprint, which is a network for immunizing pregnant women and uh, newborn babies. And it explains all about the background of uh, vaccinating women in pregnancy, because you also get offered pertussis and flu vaccine. So uh, have a look. And there's quite a bit of information also from the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And you can find that all on the on the website. I hope that's helpful because it's quite a comprehensive uh, question. But uh, we believe that the vaccines prevent uh, serious illness in the pregnant women and consequences for their babies. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you helpful. so much. Thank we'll put you. a link to, to those videos yeah. on our own platforms. Um, and, uh, and also, thank you very much indeed for talking to us Thank today, you. as always. Take care. Bye-bye.